How's it going YouTubers? This is the Rugged Man with Rugged Man Reviews and Tips. Today I'm bringing you a review on cell phones. Specifically cell phones for maybe the construction field, the outdoors guy, somebody that works out in the rain a lot, or maybe just people that are really bad with phones. You need to have a durable, dependable phone. I'm going to go over a few of those things right now. I'm going to show you some of the phones that I've personally owned and go over some of the features that I like or dislike about those phones. And then hopefully I'll be able to steer you in the right direction by at least giving you some ideas about the features to look for for your next phone for durability purposes. Right here, right now. I have some of the phones that I've owned throughout the years here. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the quick things with you here. HTC One M8. This phone, obviously outdated now, but I bought it when it was new and I had it for a while. Uh, not, not a bad phone by any means. Not necessarily the most rugged and durable phone. So, as you can tell, it's a very sleek designed phone. I'm going to cover some of the serial numbers and stuff here and show you the back. It's got a metal casing and stuff. A very nice looking phone. It was a very nice operating phone as well, don't get me wrong. I'm going to talk about the pros first. The graphics of the phone, fantastic, full definition display. The display itself, vibrant colors, great quality. Uh, the processing speed of this phone was top notch when I when I when I bought it. It was definitely a very very quick, responsive phone. Never slow, lagged out, just switching screens. Could play YouTube with a click. Never had a loading time. Very very nice. Um, now games, fantastic for games and videos. This is a very big pro to me was that the speakers were in front. So you can see the speakers are in front. They have a lot of a uh, you know, open space for that secret speaker to aerate through, kind of, you know, very nice to be watching a video and have those speakers aimed at you. You don't have to do that little, like, cup maneuver or stick it in a glass or something. So, that was fantastic feature of the phone. There was a lot of accessories available for this phone when it was brand new. HTC is very good about that. They're a top-of-the-line phone company. You know, uh, Samsung HTC, here's a Samsung for you. But Samsung HTC, top-of-the-line phones, a lot of accessories. Now, to make this phone a little more durable when I had it, I, you know, bought the Otter Box for it. It very much helped with the, you know, the, the dropping of the phone and stuff like that, but by no means is it waterproof. So, at the time of me purchasing this phone, I was selling auto parts sitting at a desk or a counter all day. So, I didn't need it to be as rugged and durable as when I switched my jobs and I still had this phone. I work outside doing apartment maintenance, so I'm constantly going back and forth between apartment buildings. I'm outside a lot. Um... And here in southwest Florida, it's muggy, it's hot, and our rainy season, every single day, you get pounded with rain for like at least an hour, and it will be like a straight-up downpour. After that, it'll all dry up because the sun comes right back out. But that doesn't mean that my phone's going to dry up in my wet pants pocket. So, as an alternative, if you happen to have a phone like this that you like using, and it happens to not be waterproof, even though a lot of newer phones are being waterproof and sleek design, or at least water-resistant, as they call it now, um, which is what they should call it, honestly, but if you do have something like that that you want to protect against all this, you know, water and stuff like that, just a little extra, even if it is already water resistant, this is something that I purchased for like $10, 6 to $10 at Walmart. I forget exactly what it was. It's made by a company called Atwood that I haven't heard of. Just a waterproof phone box. Has a waterproof seal. Seals nice into here. You just pop your phone in there, close it up. It does have some movement to it, so it can move around in there quite a bit. The Otter Box would help that, of course, but you might scratch your phone up in here if you don't have some kind of, some kind of protection on it. But it is 100% waterproof. So, this is something that I would recommend if you, if you want extra protection. I even take my phones that are supposed to be 100% waterproof and put them in here when it really does downpour rain here, just because I don't trust it 100%. I'm not the guy that's going to throw these phones in the sink to show you how well they work. Um, now... Of course, when that's in that box, you can't hear that thing ring. That that box is pretty pretty well closed. I mean, unless you're really listening for it, but if you're like on a golf cart or in a car, you're not gonna hear it ring. So that is definitely one downside to that part. But now this phone, like I said, fantastic accessories available. Was never really glitchy, had any problems. You know, processing speed was great. Like I said, a, gr a great phone for what it was. Um, I would say this is like a business type phone. You know, this is something. It's going to sit on your counter or in your pocket, and that's pretty much it. But the downside to the phone is, is it is fragile as far as if you drop this thing like from three feet off the ground and you hit an edge or something like that, maybe with the OtterBox on it, it helps quite a bit. 
but it will definitely probably do some damage to this phone. This, uh, this unibody is like an aluminum kind of metal of some sort. Um, it is not the most durable thing in the world. So uh, fragile, kind of a delicate phone. Um, not waterproof, not dustproof. Unibody, like I said, which to me is a, is a con. Some people like it. I'm sure it probably adds to the durability of being waterproof when they do make these newer phones waterproof with a unibody. But um, I would have to say that the unibody is a downfall just because if this battery life starts to go or something, I can't access the battery to change it unless I take it to a shop or something. If, uh, if for some reason I want to remove the battery and put it back in, like if the phone does freeze or something, which I think I've only had a couple times that it froze and I had to like hold certain buttons to kind of factory boot it. But, you know, that, that is a downfall for me. I can't take the battery out. I don't like that too much. Um, you know, not something that I enjoy. Now the real downsides to this phone, these are like uh, super cons if you would, is these little speaker ports, which I'll try to show you here. They're very, very tiny holes, right? Got uh, quite a few of them too. They like to get clogged up with lint from your pocket. So I actually had HTC, uh, HTC my first one, replaced by AT&T because it was not functioning properly from that. People on the speakerphone, when I was using it, the microphone is in here somewhere and it got clogged up with this, you know, lint from my pocket and it just clogged those speaker ports or those microphone ports. So it made me sound very muffled. Now the speakerphone didn't work very well to begin with this phone. I'd have to kind of still hold it near my face. I couldn't set it down and do my dishes or something. Um, especially background noise made it even worse. So if I was driving or something, it, the speakerphone didn't work well to begin with. It's not that it didn't work. It just didn't, didn't work well. Now, I did have AT&T replace it once, and then I made sure I, every once in a while, took a toothbrush and cleaned out that stuff, you know, as best as I could. But even on this one, the speakerphone was never that great. You know, it just worked. Now, eventually it was just to the point where I didn't even use it, because even if you're holding it right next to your face and there's no background noise, people would still say that you sounded muffled because, of course, there was, like, lint or dust caught in there. That is a big downfall to this phone for me, and uh, unfortunately it kind of coincides with the forward facing speakers that I like. So uh, unless those ports were opened up quite a bit more, then there, you risk damage to the speakers and stuff like that. So that, that's pretty much the whole of this phone. As far as uh, the only other downside I'd say was kind of battery life. I mean, it wasn't fantastic battery life and it wasn't garbage battery life either. But I mean, I definitely, if I, you know, used the phone frequently throughout the day, I would have to do that like, you know, three o'clock, oh my God, I gotta charge my phone kind of routine. So I think that's kind of standard on a lot of these smartphones nowadays, though. So I can't really say it was horrible, but it's a con to me. Um, now, moving on from that phone, I was looking for a more dur durable phone because of my work change and all that stuff. And I didn't want to have to keep putting it in the waterproof box that I bought and all that good stuff. So I moved on to this phone, which this is a Samsung Galaxy S5. Now, I purchased this phone refurbished on Amazon. I didn't buy it brand new. Uh... It, kind of an outdated phone when I already bought it. <clears throat> but, you know, um, as far as software updates, it was up to date for quite a while, not so much anymore. The HTC is definitely a little bit higher up on their software dates, but this was one of their main top phones. This was kind of like a side thought, I think. Uh, you know, it was an, a Galaxy S5, but it's the active models for people that are outdoorsy and stuff. And I, I, would, I would say that this is like a semi-outdoorsy person's phone, if I was really going to put it. Like, this is kind of the business person's phone, and this is kind of like, you know, I go hiking on the weekends with my dog and my girlfriend. That's kind of what this is. So, I do like a lot of the features. They kind of put, like, a little grip on the side here, and it's kind of rugged, and it's cool because it's got the camouflage, if you're into that. I mean, I just like green, so that works for me. Um, not, not a bad phone by any means, but not, not, not the best phone in the world either. We'll go over some of the pros. Uh, does have the expandable memory. It's of course behind this uh, this piece here. You can get your nail in there if you have nails and pop it open or use a key or something. And it, then you have to make sure you snap it all the way around. You got to run all your finger all the way around and make sure it's snapped in place because that is your waterproofing for your battery pack and everything. So, um, but under here you can put an SD card in it. You know, uh, HTC has a little door that you can put it in there. So they're both expandable memory. Good points on that. This is supposedly waterproof or resistant, whatever you want to call it dust proof, you know, dirt resistant, whatever. Uh, that was a pro for me buying it. Now, the active button that these actives have, there's a couple other phones now that even Samsung doesn't make. I think, my, you know, there's an LG or something that has an active button. 
Kind of a unique little feature. Push the active button, it brings up an active menu. It has like a barometer, uh, step counter, compass, flashlight, all that stuff. But honestly, I use my flashlight a lot at work. So having to click the button, then click the flashlight menu, then click the power for the flashlight, and then kind of like turn the flashlight up to its higher setting to use it. It, it was a lot of steps for me just use a flashlight at work. So I mean, but it's still, I like the little active button and I can use the compass and stuff like that. Of course, uh, how legitimately accurate they are, I don't know, but at least it would point you kind of in the right direction, I'm sure. So uh, the style of the phone was also a very big point. I mean, it's it's a cool looking phone. It does seem kind of durable. I mean, you can see the difference of the thickness. It's quite a bit, you know, not a lot, but quite a bit fatter than that HTC side profile. And it's definitely got some more rugged features on it than the HTC does. So that is definitely a... Uh, uh, a good point for me. Now, I did put a tempered glass piece on here, and you'll kind of see it uh, maybe in the, the video. There is a crack in there, but, you know, it's a pretty durable phone. The removable battery, of course, like we talked about, Pro. I like that. But let's go the cons here. The screen design, like I said, I put one of those tempered glass on there. It did crack eventually, years later. I mean, I probably had this thing for like a year and a half, two years. But the major, major con on this thing, a super con for me, would be that the, the screen has this little piece of glass under these actual hard buttons or whatever you call them, actual like touch buttons, not a touch screen. And you can see it does have a chip missing right over here. I was going to set it down in the shop like that to prop it up to use the, uh, you know, some measurements that I had to cut some measurements out. And it just literally cracked the screen right there. I guess I set it down too hard. But yeah, that is a huge downfall for me. It has a very uh, inherent weak point in the design. I'm sure that the glass, I mean, it's definitely thick glass. I'm, I think it's Gorilla Glass or whatever. I don't know what level, but that is definitely a huge thing for me. Now, the rear speaker thing. I mean, the speaker's waterproof, so it's cool. It's open. It's waterproof. You don't have to, like, put a cover on it to go, go waterproof as well as the, uh, you know, headphone port is waterproof. There's no cover. The only thing that has a cover is a charging port. Now, <sighs> That's the thing though, is that rear speaker, when I'm trying to watch a YouTube video and you gotta cup your hand or, you know, some of them are so low and I hope that my recordings come out kind of loud that, uh, you know, you can hear me, but they're so low, you're like turning your phone, you're not even watching, you gotta go to a mirror to watch it in reverse just to see what's going on. It's just very a horrible, horrible design on that. At least make them excessively loud if you're gonna do that. Now. Uh, there were some slight glitches on this phone. I wouldn't say it's like a horrible con, but I mean, it did have some times of freezing. I did have times of opening apps where it wouldn't run properly. Um, little, little minute glitches, and as the age to the phone worked at more and more, there would be times where the phone just shut off on me, which I've had that problem with a lot of other phones, not just smartphones. I didn't have that with the HTC where it would just shut off, but it would just like shut off and I'd have to start it back up and then it would be perfectly fine. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a, a you know, a downfall for this phone here. Now, uh, the speakerphone on this one, like I told you on this one, it worked, it just didn't work, it never worked good. Um, and then eventually it didn't work really at all for me. Um, this one never worked right. Now, mind you, I did buy this on Amazon as a refurbed phone, so I'm not condemning the entire Samsung active line uh, based on the S5 refurb that I bought, but I would definitely say that this Samsung's speaker never worked properly. Nobody could hear me on it, I could hear them fine, but they could not hear me on it whatsoever. So I've never really used a speakerphone on this phone. I can't do an honest review on it just because of the fact that it was a refurb phone, but I, I'm gonna say that's a downfall for me. Um, another big downfall is it's not as tough as advertised. This, you know, this, the, it's drop proof from three foot and I was like six inches off and crack broke the screen. It just kinda, you know, messed that up for me. Um, at that point, it's not waterproof, it's not dustproof, and that happened about three months after owning it, so I didn't really get to test it in the water, so to speak. So, a couple rainy days here and there, that was about it. Um, now, there wasn't as many accessories for this phone. That's another downfall. HTC, you could find extra, uh, accessories for it all day. Um, I was able to get this, uh, I like the American flag case, of course, but it's just like a snap-on case. It didn't have a screen protector. I bought the glass one. Um which kind of done it did its job, but it doesn't cover that downside piece where it's, you know, very, very fragile. So, um, software updates, like I said, not as much as HTC, but I would say battery life was a downfall on this one from the get-go. 
it had less battery life than the HTC did by far. Um, midway through the day on my lunch break, you know, 12 o'clock or something, I'd be like, oh God, I gotta charge my phone. So it didn't even make it to the three o'clock that this thing would. Um, but it, it, it dropped fast too. I mean, it was to the point where I used to be able to make it till three and then it was like a, three months in, I cracked the screen and the battery life was garbage. Now the battery is swappable because I could open it up, but I did not spend the money on it because it was like, I'll just plug it in on my lunch break. So. Um, I already planned on getting another phone as soon as I broke that anyway. I was like, okay, this is not as durable as I need. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the Samsung Galaxy S5 active. I've heard that the S6 was roughly similar as far as the phone, and the S7 is a bit more durable. I, I, I don't even know about the S8s because I'm not that rich. So moving on to my current day phone is the Sonom XP7. Now, a lot of people don't even know what the heck this phone is, but I'm going to go over this phone with you. This is something that came out, I believe, in, it was definitely the Canadian market, but it's also the European markets. I think Sonom's based out of America, though. Um, but they don't. you can get them here. Either this works on AT&T, uh, T-Mobile. It may work on Verizon. I'm not positive on that, how that works. Um, it was originally meant for, like, My Bell, right, which is, I believe, a company up in you know, uh, Canada, and there was another company that offered this phone up in Canada that I can't remember the name of, but I did some research on some really durable phones, and this phone is kind of one of the more durable phones. So, we're going to talk about some differences before I even get into the pros and cons here. Now, this phone is like a brick. Um, it, it, you can see the screen size is much, much smaller than the HTC or the Samsung phone, um, much smaller, and some of this is just like border glass. I mean, it's it's not a screen. The screen is not the whole entire thing. Um, I will light this one up for you, just so you can kind of see the the phone's you know basic screen here. So it is a smaller screen on it. Um, it does have some hardline buttons that are not surrounded by glass, so that's perfect. The glass is pretty pretty rock solid. Um, the phone is a brick, though. I mean, this phone is just gigantic. I would say it's almost three times wider. Yeah, it's, it's like two and a half times thicker than the, the Samsung and probably at least three times the HTC. It is a brick. Um, it is a tough, tough phone. This is not a case over the phone. This is the phone. So we'll, we'll touch on these uh, pros and cons really quick. This is a super, super durable phone. Uh, I've had this phone for about four months now. I've dropped it several times from some, bitty, uh, some big drops. Um, I've dropped this thing off of a ladder at six foot already. Um, accidentally, of course. It's not like I'm trying to break the phone. Uh, I've dropped this thing out of cars and slid it across the ground quite a few times, and that was mainly because of the belt clip option, which I'll get into that with you too. Um, so it, definitely a, a big difference in, in, in this phone compared to these phones. I, I believe the durability of the Sonom XP7 it was fantastic. Now, so super durable. There is a push to talk button, right? Uh, you'd have to set up a push to talk with either your, your provider or get an app. And like, if you have an app, anybody can do it, but I have a button designated for mine, which I really, really like. So uh, there's like Zello and uh, what, what's the other one? Voxer, and there's quite a few of the push to talk apps. So I have my push to talk app set up to where when I push that button, I can automatically access push to talk and hold it down to talk, uh, in fact, rather than holding the, the button on my screen. So um, the big big thing for me, I like the push to talk. Now, um, network crossover. This thing, like I said, it definitely works for like AT and T, T Mobile. Um, I believe you can set it up on like Boost, Sprint. I'm pretty sure there's a Verizon option. I'm not sure if this one does it because this one specifically takes my SIM card. So uh, it, it may be a, a, you know the same model and everything but designed for a different network because there is two networks in Canada that I know that carry this. I did have to buy this used, although it was very, very, very slightly used. I'd say almost new. I didn't get the actual original box, but they got the original box insert with it. Um, so this, this phone definitely, network crossover is good. Flashlight access. Flashlight access is amazing because even when my screen is locked, I have the flashlight button right here. And I mean, it is, it is a pretty bright flashlight. I know we're working on sunlight here, so, but it is a very bright, I can click it on and off without even unlocking my screen, which is amazing. Um, now, the flashlight access is a big thing. There's this red button thing they have here, which this phone was designed for people at work, like out in the field and stuff, and this was supposed to be a lone worker's button. 
So up in Canada, they do have access to make this button work on the networks that this phone is offered by, but I haven't talked to AT&T or, or T-Mobile or any of them to see if they have access to make this work. Um, but it would be a button that you click and if you're like fall in a well or something like that, and it will send emergency workers to your GPS coordinates. Continuing on with the pros of the Sonom XB7. Uh, the, the charger I do like. I have the car charger out here because my regular charger is in the house for charging purposes. Uh, it does have a very specific style magnetic charger that kind of locks in there. I mean, it's not a super magnet or anything, but it is pretty tough. Uh, I want to say this is a pro and a con because I really like the charger. It's very durable. Um, you're not going to get dust and debris caught in there that you can't get out and stuff like that like you do with these uh, mini USBs. Uh, I like that part of the charger. You're not going to find a charger at every store though. So that's why I made sure when I purchased one, I had one that came with a car charger and a house charger. Now the car charger is simply just a USB. Um, so I can actually still use that inside the house if I ever need to. Now, the speaker phone and the speaker in general. This is a very, very loud phone. Um, to j just give you an idea here, um, let me go to my settings really quick here, and go to my sound options. I mean, it is an, a, a very, very loud phone. Um, it does work with speakerphone as well being that loud. Uh, extremely loud. I can listen to Pandora at work without using a Bluetooth speaker. Um, fantastic speaker. Um, the microphone for the speakerphone, there is a little microphone down here by the button. I don't know if you can really see that little hole right there. Um, picks up everything lovely. I can talk on the phone while I drive my loud truck uh, and I have it clipped into the dashboard and stuff like that. Those are all some really really big points for me as far as uh, uh, pros on this phone. Uh, software updates is going to be a con. Switching over to cons quickly. Uh, th this is running like Android 4.4.4 which is severely outdated. I think they're on like 8 or something like that now. May maybe the late 7s but um, it, 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 there's a supposedly an update up in Canada for this on their networks for 5.1 um, but that's not a Huge deal to me, because as long as the phone functions where I can make phone calls, I can use YouTube, I can, uh, you know, listen to Pandora, maybe like an Instagram account or something, whatever. That's all I really need this for. And it doubles as a hammer if you need to, although I, I wouldn't suggest trying that because I'm just kidding. But it is very, very heavy. Uh, it, it is outdated technology, I'll be honest with that. The processing is a little bit slow. It does, you know, side-to-side -side scrolling on your regular homepage is fine. Clicking on apps, it takes a second to load. Internet, uh, like for instance, when I'm at work and I'm on my regular, um, you know, my network's Wi-Fi, my AT&T Wi-Fi, um, it's fine. I come home, I hook up to my Wi-Fi here, that's cool, but when I'm on that range where you're kind of in and out of the Wi-Fi, it kind of goes back and forth, back and forth, and kind of causes a little bit of issues there. Outdated technology is fine with me if, if it's a truly durable phone, because that's what I need it for. Now, uh, like I said, processor is a little bit slower. Um, it, it's a little bit taxing if you're trying to run some newer apps. Yeah, uh, I do run some newer apps and stuff as far as video games on here when I'm just bored. But it, it honestly, I have a, you know a computer and a PlayStation if I want to play video games. The last con of the Sonom XP7 really being the, the graphics. It's a low resolution. I think on YouTube I'm running like 480 is like maxing it out. Uh, it, it kind of a kind of a pro to me because it makes the battery life last longer and I, I don't need to watch top of the line video quality all the time. Um, I have TVs in my household for that. So um, there is some compromises to having this phone. Um, the camera, front, the forward facing camera, like if you're looking at it, the screen camera, whatever you want to call that, front facing I believe, the quality is uh, uh, passable, you know, at best. Um, the, the other camera, I can use it to take pictures. But I mean, they're not. It's it's not. I'm using a DSLR shoot right now. The quality is not a DSL uh, DSLR. This is just a camera phone camera. Um, nothing spectacular, but still, nonetheless, 
compromises with every phone. Now, uh, just to explain to you a couple little features, you can watch some reviews on this phone if you want to do that as well. Um, there is a specialty tool that comes with the phone, so if you're purchasing a used one from Canada, like I did, lightly used, whatever, uh, it has the typical pin tool for opening stuff, um, like little push button slots, and then it has like a, a Torx bit, I don't think you're going to really see that much on that screen, but um, a little Torx bit to open up stuff here. Now your, your headphone port is accessible without taking the tab off. It's like a little flexi tab. Uh, pushing it back down to make sure it's waterproof, very important. Um, but to get the SIM card slot open and stuff like that, you do need to uh, you do need to take that completely off. So that is something that if you're going to buy one of these phones, make sure you do have the proper tool set that comes with it. And the tool set snaps in place and does say Sonom on it. You can put it on a lanyard or something if you want to. I leave it at the house. So um, I, like I said, also bought mine with the car charger and the home charger just because... Uh, Sonom does sell the car charger itself by Sonom, USB car charger. Um, I didn't want to go and spend the money on it at Sonom. I just bought one of the phones. It was like another uh, maybe 60 bucks to get the phone with the actual stuff versus the phone without it. Um, it was the belt clip too that kind of sold me on it, which I have a problem inherently with these belt clips. All of them seem to do the same exact thing is if you have it on your belt kind of sideways and you slide into a car that has like a higher lumbar support or whatever, I have a bench seat in my truck so it doesn't give me that problem, you end up snapping this little belt clip off, which when it comes to the, the typical otter boxes, it just snaps off of the plastic and you're done. There's like, unless you're gonna drill holes in it or something, there's no way that you could like kind of fix something else to uh, kind of seat it back in place and use it again for something. Uh, the otter box is a fantastic tool, but uh, or, or accessory I should say, but Honestly, you're, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to repair that. That's something that the OtterBox's warranty would come in handy for. Now, with the one from the Sonom, which is a little different, which I'm going to have to use my phone to actually get it off, I still have the belt clip. But when the clip actually broke off, I was able to take a piece of plastic, like, pin out of it. You could pinch it and pull the whole clip off and maybe be able to find an original clip, maybe possibly from Sonom or something. But what I did was I put a leather snap into it and then I just made a little ringlet for my belt I put my belt on in the morning and I slide my belt through it and I put that other end of the snap on there now it is quite a bit tougher than the original but I have managed to break this at least once too so but at least here I just go and put you know a, a dollar's worth of leather snap onto it and rebuild it again it has not broken the plastic it usually breaks the snap off of the leather if it breaks anything which is um, in my book perfectly fine and okay and I get a 360 spin now. So, and this phone does not fall out. You can spin it the other way and have it that way too. Although, I, I, like I said, I'm always working and rugged and durability is my key here. So, I always face the phone screen in. But, with all that being said, hopefully some of these things can help you out on your features. About, you know, features to look for on the phone. And find if you are in a field that requires you to have a really tough phone. Stuff like that. Or maybe you just watching this because you want to see what I think about these other phones, which I think they all have their place. Um, I believe, honestly, the Sonom is the phone for me. It might not be the phone for you. I would highly recommend looking up some reviews on the phone specifically about just that phone and seeing what you think uh, if you don't mind having some outdated technology in the compromise for durability. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that is definitely the phone that I wanted. I've had it for a while now and it has held up fantastic. So. Uh, I want to thank all of you for your time, and uh, as always, like and subscribe down below, but I'll tell you what, as far as phones go for me, that's rugged.